Hello and welcome to Unity Presbyterian Church Online. This week in worship, we welcome the Reverend Dr. Byron Wade, who is the head of the Western North Carolina Presbytery, as he brings us a message titled, Crossing Over. Let's listen. Good morning to you. It's a blessing to see each and every one of you, and I'm honored to be here as the General Presbyter. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Just call me a child of God today. But I'm glad to be in your presence here today, so I'm thankful to the pastors of this church, David Bonama and Dana Seiler and all the officers for allowing me to be here with you this morning. Before I begin my sermon, I do want to read our scripture for today. It will come from the book of Joshua, chapter 3, verses 7 through 17. Listen for God's word unto you. The Lord said to Joshua, this day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, so that they may know that I will be with you as I was with Moses. You are the one who shall command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant. When you come to the edge of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand in the Jordan. Joshua then said to the Israelites, draw near and hear the words of the Lord your God. Joshua said, By this you shall know that among you is the living God, who without fail will drive out from you, before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Amorites, and Jebusites. The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth is going to pass before you into the Jordan. So now select 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. When the soles of the feet of the priest who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan flowing from above shall be cut off. They shall stand in a single heap. When the people set out, from their tents to cross over the Jordan, the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant were in front of the people. Now the Jordan overflows all of its banks throughout the time of harvest. So when those who bore the Ark had come to the Jordan, and the feet of the priests bearing the Ark were dipped in the edge of the water, the waters flowing from above stood still rising up in a single heat far off at Adam, the city that is beside Zarethan, while those flowing toward the sea of the Ar Araba, the Dead Sea, were wholly cut off. Then the people crossed over opposite Jericho. When all Israel were crossing over on dry ground, the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan, until the entire nation finished crossing over the Jordan. Amen. Yesterday, I had the experience that some of you may have had a while, and some of you have children, hopefully you will have. Yesterday, my wife and I took our son to college for the very first time. Now, let me give you a little background. My son, Andrew, is actually a sophomore this year, graduated from Garner High School last year. And many of you know, because of COVID, graduations as well as life changed within itself. So Andrew not only had to go through a walkthrough graduation at Garner High School, where he was a student body president, he spent the whole first year learning online. Oh, by the way, he goes to UNC Chapel Hill. Just want to let you know that. So all last year, he was in the Carolina, uh, Carolina Away program, which he did all of his classes online. Very, very, very tough transition for many young people, as well as many of us who've had to go online. So he finished, and he made the decision this year that he wanted to go on campus. So we dropped him off yesterday. And if you have been this very similar situation, having children who are going to college, it is a crossing over point. You find out that your relationship with your child is now going to be totally different than it was the first 18 
or 19 years. I caught myself this morning. We dropped him off. I didn't really have a chance to say goodbye to him, you know, give him some words of wisdom. So I texted him this morning about 7 o'clock. I said, son, good morning. I hope that you are awake right now, but you're probably still asleep. I hope you had a good time with some of your friends that you met last night and went to dinner with. But this was the sentence that really struck me. Want to know when you're available so I can give you a call. So let me know when you're available so I can give you a call. So he texts me back. Now, usually when he's at home, Dad, you can talk to me anytime. But now I'm on a schedule. So he texts me back and he says, Dad, if it's okay to call me after 11 and before 3, I shouldn't be doing anything then. It's a crossing over point. I'm going from a parent to a coach, in a sense, trying to help him understand what it means to be an adult and act that out. It was the same thing for me. When my parents drove me from Los Angeles, California, to Whitworth College, where I began my college career in Spokane, Washington. It's a new way of living. It's going from what is known to the unknown and trying to walk with your child through what's going to happen in life. For those of us who are even here in this place today, we are preparing to cross over into a new way. We talk about what's going on with this pandemic. We talk about what's going on and the changes in the world and also the changes of the church. We too are about to cross over into a new land. And if any of you have had the opportunity of going from the known to the unknown, you are aware that it's scary. You are aware that there are many things that you are facing that's the unknown, that you don't know what's going to happen to you. And even those of us who are Christians in the church understand we can't go back to the way things were. But if God is going to move us to a new place, how do we know that God is going to be with us? The same thing is happening here within the book of Joshua. For Joshua now is the one who is called by God to lead the people over the Jordan into the new land in Canaan. But we do find out here that although Joshua was new at this, Joshua had a mentor in Moses, but it was told to Moses that he would not cross over the land with them. So Joshua had these people. Now, many of you are aware, if you have read the Bible in some form or way, especially here in the Old Testament, the people weren't necessarily listening to what God had to say. They were, as my mama said, they were hard-headed. There are many things that Moses had to deal with the people, and there are many things that Joshua had to deal with the people. So he's dealing with people who have been out here for a while, trying to make their way to the promised land. And they had to cross over the Jordan. They had to cross over a river that was probably about 10 feet deep. They had to cross over a river that sometimes, as the Bible tells it, it swells when the waters start to rise and the rains start to come. So we find out here that not only is Joshua a new leader, taking these people that he knew, good and bad, now they have to make their way over into Jericho, into Canaan land, and there's an impediment right in front of them. But yet, God calls them to cross over. Have we ever been in that point within our lives where God is calling us to do something new, but there is something that's blocking us right there in the way? And sometimes it seems like what's in front of us is so formidable that we can't get over it. Maybe it's the health challenges that we have found within our lives. Maybe we've been living our lives the way God has called us to, but maybe the doctor has given us some news that we don't necessarily want to hear. And now we have to cross over into a new way of living. Maybe for some of you, it's a loss of a loved one. Knowing that that person is no longer going to be with us. So how is God going to help us get over the pain and hurt? Maybe sometimes it's in our churches. That maybe there's conflict, and maybe there's something that's happening so bad that we don't know where to go. But we know that God is trying to lead us somewhere differently. How do we deal with that? It wasn't easy for Joshua, for yet, number one, Jericho was not an inviting place for them. The king of Jericho did not want them there, and as they faced the waters at the edge, 
they had nowhere to go. They definitely didn't want to go back. But how are they going to move forward in a new land? Beloved, today we are in a new land. We're in a totally new landscape of life. Anybody here want to return to the 1950s and 60s? Raise your hand. <laughs> we got one. Okay. How about anybody want to return back to the 1990s? 1990s? No? No, no, no. Anybody here want to return, return back to the 2000s? As much as we want to, we can't. There are some things that we could take with us. But the God that we serve is always calling us into a new reality. And all we're called to do is to trust and know that God will always be with us. See, because God was also with Joshua, and God was also with the people, the Israelites. And, and see, how did they make it on over as they got there to the edge? The presence of God was with them, the Ark of the Covenant. And so when the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant put their feet into the waters, they were assured that none of the Israelites were going to be swept up by the currents, for the sea had parted. They were, had a way out of no way, as we say, that they were going to make it into a new land that God had for them. And as those waters were parted, you can imagine the people like, oh my God, God has done it again. Can you imagine these walls of water that are, that are on either side and there's dry land and we can make it over into the land that God has for us? God will allow you, Unity Church, to cross over to the new land. I, I don't know what God has for you here, but I do know that whatever God has for you is not going to hurt you. As you live in this area, which is growing, as you seek to, to do mission and ministry in this place in a new way with new people and even with old people, that's fine too. God is calling you to cross over, that the water is warm on this side. You don't have to go back to the water that was there before. God is calling us as people of Christ, that as we continue to move and to live and to have our being, we can't go back to what was old. Sure, like I said before, we can learn from it. But God always moves us in a direction towards God's purposes within our lives. And all we're called to do is to have that faith and trust in the God who knew us even before we came out of the womb, who knows the number of the hairs on our head and knows the number of the years that we're going to live on this earth. We serve a God who is all-powerful and all-knowing and all-present within our lives. And all we're called to do is to trust. God, although it seems this way, God never calls us to a purpose in which God is not going to be present. God has promised always to be present. And through the help of God, we'll make it on over. If you look back on your lives and see some turning points where God has been with you, you could have made a decision to go one way or the crossover into the new way that God has for us. Some of our lives, sure enough, we've stayed where we wanted because we like the comfort and we like the security. But if you look in other areas of your lives, you will see where God has been with you when you made it over the death of a loved one. God has been with you when you think you didn't have any money and didn't know how you're going to feed your kids. God made a way when you lost your job and didn't know where the next check was going to come from in your life. See, God was with you through everything. We could have made a decision to stay back, but God moved us forward, the crossover into the new reality. And let me tell you, the new reality, I have to say this, sometimes it's not all cracked up what it, what it says it's going to be. But you know what? God never promised it was going to be easy. God just promised that God would be with us. Mahalia Jackson, the old African-American singer, the late African-American singer, used to sing a song, How I Got Over. The verse is, how I got over, how did I make it over? You know, my soul looks back and wonders, how did I make it over? Beloved of unity today, unity today God will help you make it on over. I don't know what 
life looks like after COVID, but we know it won't look the same as it did before COVID. I, I don't know what education, I don't, I don't know what life will look like for you, but I do know this, that God calls you, God equips you, and God walks with you every day. May you never forget what the Lord has done for you. May you always remember that no matter where you go, God's presence goes with you and goes before you. And may you be able to answer the call that God has called us to, to a way of new life. For when you face those hurdles in life, we can look back and see that God has helped us the cross on over. Amen. If you would like more information about Unity Presbyterian Church, please visit our website at www.unitypres.org or visit us on Facebook. This is the Unity Presbyterian Church Podcast. Have a great week.